here now. Welcome everybody to Sticks and Sips. I am Frankie Drinks and this is our big, big tequila show. So I welcome all of you guys back joining us from all over. So don't forget to check in from wherever you're at. Most importantly, make sure to get those great questions in. Hashtag Ask Frankie Drinks. And we have an amazing, an amazing show for you tonight. So uh, let's throw up that menu because we got so many things to talk about. Our big happy hour cocktail, Corp Survivor number eight. So you guys uh, that had wondering what that's about, I'm going to show you a little video, how to make one for, your, for the house. Our big sips for tonight, Tequila Ocho Plata. And so our big guest is Mr. Jesse Estes with uh, Tequila Ocho and Kara Bella from Drew Estate. So we'll be chatting with them. Our featured stick tonight, you can't miss out on this one. This is the Herrera Esteli Norteño. And we're doing the Lonsdale tonight. So uh, I welcome you guys to, to light up your sticks, pour a little sip for yourself, and, uh, and let's get this party started. But I've got some huge, huge, big news for all of you guys. So first up, I'm going to ask uh, production, throw up that uh, beautiful slide. Uh, next week, our big anniversary episode. So don't miss that because we got a monster giveaway. We've got the big mega standing Pappy Van Winkle ashtray uh, as part of our giveaway. So make sure you tune in next week. And we got uh, my main man. JD is going to be in the house. We got Joey. We got Joe Grow. Jack Hare is going to join us as well. And we're going to be celebrating a year on the air with your support. So um, I'm super excited about next week. But I've also got another big chunk of news for you. So let's throw that up. Freestyle Live coming up on May 6th. Tune in 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, we've got these beautiful beautiful kits that are going to go out to retailers uh they, they're shipping on the 14th so next week's going to be a really big week you guys can go on drewestate.com uh, freestyle live you're going to find the list of retailers where you can pick up your freestyle live pack and that includes this beautiful freestyle live lighter this beautiful freestyle live cutter check out that beautiful thing and this beautiful five count travel humidor with three, count them, three mystery cigars. And uh, we won't tell you what they are until you get to try them with us on Freestyle Live. So uh, check it out. Uh, I believe the price is $40 MSRP. So get on with the retailers. I believe some retailers are taking orders right now. And not only that, but you get this beautiful lanyard and this beautiful Freestyle Live uh, badge, but more importantly on the back is your number. And with that number, we're doing a massive giveaway. Uh, we're doing a dirt bike uh, in honor of the factory. So if you've ever been on the factory tour, you get to see those beautiful dirt bikes that are up front. We're giving out as our first prize, a dirt bike. Our second prize is a Drew Estate home bar just for you and who, who better to give you a home bar than Drew Estate and Sticks and Sips, right? And finally, uh, is a standing humidor. Uh, that's a third prize. So make sure you guys get on, uh, get on that Drew Estate uh, website, get on the retailers, get your orders in and get ready for Freestyle Live on May 6th. So, uh, and man, I, I almost forgot, not only just the beautiful Sticks and Sips swag that you get with Ask Frankie Drinks, right? So you get this beautiful Zycar cutter as well, right? But I'm adding one more thing to it. We just, we're gonna get these in and these are your Sticks and Sips cocktail kits. So you guys are gonna be able to make your own uh, featured cocktail is the old fashioned here. And so you're gonna get a little, little some sugar cubes, your little mixing spoon, um, some bitters. So you guys can make about four old fashions here and that should tide you over for about, you know, a good hour. And so, uh, so all you got to do, ask, hashtag Ask Frankie Drinks, and we got a, a great show. So, look, it's a happy hour. Uh, you know, we're all together here. So, uh, Jack, I'm going to say uh, roll that beautiful Corpse Reviver footage. So, uh, Corpse Reviver, guys, uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of a – this version dates back to, like, the 1800s and um, 1861. It was pretty much like the hangover cure cocktail. Uh, beautiful representation of, of 
beautiful flavors and, and, and balance. It shows up in Henry Craddock's uh, uh, the Savoy cocktail book. And um, my favorite quote is four of these taken into session reverses the effects. So um, so that's uh, that's your corpse reviver. And it's a simple cocktail to make. All you need is the right ingredients, right measurements, and a uh, beautiful video by my good friend uh, Dario uh, in the house. And you know, we're gonna throw up the uh, the recipe here for you guys in two seconds. So you guys get to check out. And it's super delicious. Just, it just is super that. delicious. Joey, I'm gonna go to you, man. How delicious is it? It's very delicious. And I made a batch for a bunch of neighbors uh, last weekend. It's totally displaced the margarita. Margarita, you're done. It's over, forget it. You're done, Margarita, because this Corpse Survivor is the shit. It'll get you amped up. I'm amped up. I'm ready. I'm ready, ready, ready. Well, All sorry right, well, now I'm that, pretty guys. much uh, <laughs> upset with myself that I didn't go to the store to get that last ingredient I needed to make it for tonight. Oh, it's dynamite. It's It's got a lot of stuff going on flavor-wise, but it's so delicious and refreshing at the same time. So... You'll get right. so I, I, I had I had to go get mine because you know I had to hide it away from everyone and I hid it in the freezer um, just to make sure that no one got to it. And so uh, for everybody asking, you know, um, we used equal equal parts of uh, of tequila ocho, um, an ounce of lime juice, um, and an ounce of coqui americano, and an ounce of Pierre Ferrand orange curacao. And we did a little uh, glass rinse of absinthe. So everybody gets afraid about absinthe. It's a beautiful, beautiful flavor. Um, and you're just doing a little, little rinse. And then you just get all your ingredients, sh shake them up really, really good. Make sure it's super, super chilled. And you're going to pour it into a beautiful chilled coupe glass. And I have an aromatizer with a little bit of absinthe. And I float it right on the top just to bring out all the aromas. And it's, uh, it's a great cocktail for you guys to enjoy. And I'm gonna say, uh, let's raise a glass tonight to being together and, uh, and cheers guys. Cheers. Salud. Salud. It was right. Wow. It's so good. So good, so good. Um, so listen, I'm gonna go into uh, my first guest today. I'm very honored to, to have him on. He's a global brand ambassador for Tequila Ocho. Um, spirits educator. Uh, he's an author. I've got this beautiful, lovely uh, book on tequila cocktails, and uh, it's amazing. 40 cocktails, beautiful photography on there. Uh, not only that, so he's an award-winning bartender, so that's, he's already on my, uh, you know, on my list. Uh, uh, 2013, one of London's best bartenders. Um, and again, and he's also got another book uh, from Dram to, uh, to the Manhattan, and then he's actually told us he's writing another one. So uh, this is an amazing honor to have Mr. Jesse Estes with us. Jesse, welcome to Sticks and Sips. Frankie, honors all mine, brother. Thanks so much for having me on. This is, uh, this is very exciting. Listen, uh, you know, I've, I only, you know, touched the tip of the iceberg there. So I'm going to ask, you know, tell, tell us about you. Tell us about you and, and your journey uh, with liquor. <laughs> because uh, I think that's all our journey, right? My journey with liquor probably starts uh, in, in, in ways that I probably can't put on, put on air, uh, drinking, drinking well, well before uh, the legal age. Um, but my professional, my professional drinking career um, starts in the London bar scene. So really getting involved um, through a, a couple of le legends I consider in the industry, uh, Dre Masso and uh, Henry Besant, who's unfortunately no longer with us, but uh, they kind of mentored me and, and took me under their, their wings, so to speak, and got me started in the industry um, some years ago, a little over a decade ago now. And uh, the rest is history. Like you said, I, I, I did fairly well in, in bars in London and, and more recently took on the role of uh, international uh, brand ambassador for Tequila Ocho, which is very exciting. And being a family business, um, you know, I grew up really with, with tequila, which is, which is good fun. So now, so, you know, you opened the door. So, uh, by the way, if you started over a decade ago, you started when you were like 12, uh, you know, so. <laughs> I'm pickled from the inside out. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to go, go through that door and, and tell us about, uh, about your family and, and, and how you got involved with tequila. 
So my dad, among other things, and the, you know, I always figured this must have been a great conversation starter for him at parties. He's the official tequila ambassador from Mexico to the European Union. So he's been working with tequila in Europe since 76, so 45 years now. Um, he's credited with bringing over the first bottles of 100% agave tequila to Europe, the first bottles of artisanal mezcal, and really creating a market where in the mid 70s, there wasn't one to speak of really of, of tequila consumption there. So that, that journey has been, has been a lot of adventures there for him. And uh, about probably 13, 14 years ago, he started Tequila Ocho, which is this beautiful tequila I've got here. Uh, hang on, which hang on, hang on. We're, we're going to test the sexy cam uh, tonight because we're, we're debuting this. And uh, for everybody out there, uh, here's the beautiful shot of the Tequila Ocho uh, Plata bottle. Uh, truly beautiful and amazing spirit. And, and you get a glimpse of the tequila book, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so par pardon us uh, on, on that, you know, uh, we're, we're using this beautiful like new setup that, that Jack, our producer extraordinaire is debuting tonight for everyone on Sticks and Sips. And How uh, cam? I mean, what more do you need? We got a tequila cam, man. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What more could we need? So, uh, so my apologies for for that uh, inglorious interruption. And please continue about the beautiful story of Tequila Ocho, because this is uh, this is what uh, we've been waiting for. No, thanks for the plug, Frankie. It's always good to get that that book out there, um, and of course, Tequila Ocho, um, which is among other things the first. Uh, single field tequila in the world. So, you know, if, and again, I, I think you guys will, will know all about this with, with cigars. I'm sure cigars have their own terroir, but, you know, in the wine industry, this has been something that winemakers and wine enthusiasts have understood for hundreds of years that the, when I say terroir, I'm referring to all the natural elements surrounding the grapevines, or in our case, the agaves. So that could be things like soil composition, subsoil, drainage, orientation towards the sun, microclimate, elevation, all these are what kind of what we call terroir. Um, and playing around with this, this idea in tequila, so Carlos Camarena and, and my father, Tomas Estes, who are the, the co-founders of Tequila Ocho, um, really played around with this concept, uh, borrowed from wine. And, and now we see, you know, single origin chocolate and, and tea and hops you know i've got friends who are really into beer and it's all about the terroir of hops now so now it's it's well understood but when they started tequila ocho you know about 15 years ago 14 15 years ago this was a very new concept so every single bottle if you look on the label we've got the name of the field so las presas in this case in the year of harvest 2018 same on the neck label um, and that's, you can go to our website, you can actually, so ochotequila.com or tequilaocho.com. And you can see a map of all the different single estates, all the different single fields that we've harvested, uh, about 26 so far to date. You can click on it, see the actual fields themselves, look at all kinds of geeky information if you're a geek like me and, and uh, see the soil composition, average sugar content for the harvest, average weight, things like that. And uh, it's been a really fun experiment and, and kind of showing the existence of terroir and tequila that every batch is produced the same way. Again, this goes back to wine, but every batch has its own kind of unique characteristic, every production, every release of Tequila Ocho. So that's kind of the story, the, the short version of the story and kind of what makes Tequila Ocho unique. And it's just grown very uh, organically, let's say in the last 13 or 14 years, I think we're in about 50 countries now. So we've done, we've done well kind of promoting this brand uh, globally. And I'll say congratulations to, to you because I've seen, uh, I've seen uh, your dad speak at many uh, Tales of the Cocktails. And, uh, you know, there's always a fascinating story about uh, Tequila Ocho. And every time he tells it, it's always slightly different, and he's always adds an, another uh, flourish or flair to the story, and that's what keeps him uh, amazingly entertaining. And, and thank you for sharing uh, that part of it. So, but let's go back. So, uh, you know, listen, you, you know, you, you've got you've got this kind of move, but what drove you into the bartending world? 
Oh man, great question, Frankie. When I when I first went over to to London to to see Dre and Henry, um, I couldn't believe that people were going to pay me. I was I wasn't even bartending. I was barbacking, you know, the first the first couple of years, and I couldn't. To me, it was the best time, man. Like I, I worked hard, but it was fun, man. And you know, having having a few drinks and just getting to to meet people across the bar and fun people to work with. I just fell in love with that industry. And for, for several years, I just, I couldn't, again, I couldn't believe they were paying me to, to basically hang out in bars that I love and, uh, and, you know, have a few drinks basically and make, make a few drinks. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think, you know, part of it is uh, I think most bartenders, you know, in, in the bartending world, you like to entertain and, uh, and you have this, this audience that that changes throughout the evening that's in front of you and you're kind of front and center and uh, and you're you're making them you know i want something uh tart and i want something you know you know i want a lemon drop it goes well how how about how about i make you a corpse survivor and and if you don't like it then you know it's on me and uh and, and then all of a sudden their world has changed and their eyes are open and then you know they they've progressed in their enjoyment and and london uh, man, that's like the leading place in the world has always been uh, for for cocktails. And uh, what a great place for you to come from. Yeah, absolutely, Frankie. Just getting getting to kind of, you know, I think we've really made it in terms of in London and most places around the world in terms of the craft cocktail. But, you know, 10 years ago, it was still very nascent kind of at that point. And yeah, showing people all these kind of old classics. Um, you know, this is, you know, kind of before the Mad Men craze of, you know, old fashions and Manhattans and martinis, people going back to that. But just, yeah, introducing things like Corpse Survivors number two and um, or number eight in our case. And yeah, number uh, eight, you I'm know, a number the, eight guy, though, though, I won't turn down a number two, uh, you know, but we get we, we, we get picky about our gin. <laughs> Good. Picky about your tequila, too, I hope. Absolutely. And what you said about kind of turning people on to, to craft cocktails is absolutely true, especially in Europe still today, although that's, that's changed in recent years, like Joey and I were saying earlier before the show, is that, you know, there's a lot of education, a lot of education that's taken place in the last 10 or 20 years in, in London, in the UK, in Europe, around tequila. And there's still a lot of that taking place of kind of moving people towards drinking good quality tequila. So that's, that's great fun to be a part of, too. Yeah, there's a similarity Absolutely. there too with with cigars. You know, uh, Europe is always known for you know that's the place to get Cubans. So what we're making inroads, doing the same thing that you guys have done is making inroads with Nicaraguan cigars, and educating people you know who love cigars about hey, there's a whole other universe of cigars out there, and we're going to show you where it's at. You know, and that's the fun part. That's the that's the great part of you know taking a brand and a product that you really love. And exposing it to more people who are hungry for it you know they're there they're waiting and they're hungry for the knowledge it's cool stuff i'm, I'm with you 100 percent, joey and i think it applies probably to cigars and almost just about any anything else that people are you know eating drinking consuming there's a real emphasis on where does this where does this cigar come from tell me a story about this people really want that um, which i think is great it's great for brands like ours that really have have a great story and, and great quality behind it well, uh, speaking of, of questions and, and, you know, discovery, uh, I'm going to say, uh, listen, everybody, get your questions in. Ask Frankie Drinks. Uh, ask Jesse Drinks, if it need be, or Joey Drinks, or Kara Drinks, or even Jack Drinks. So you can get your questions in, and we'll get you your, your beautiful cutter. We, we got, a, you know, our beautiful Sticks and Sips hat and our new cocktail kits coming out. So, you know, we're all super excited. Um, you know, Jesse, I've got a 2017 from Las Aguilas, uh, which I, which I was happy to find. It was like, Oh, 2017. I'm excited. Uh, uh Kara, what's, what's yours? Mine's, the 2020. Mine's 2020. Ooh. Oh, you got a 20 from, it looks like Las Aguilas too, right? La Loma, I think. No, La Loma. La Loma. Okay. I, I awesome. actually have a couple other bottles in the house. I, ne I never looked at those, but yeah, this one here is the 2020 <laughs> La Loma. La Loma, love it. Love that's it. a so brand we all, new one. We, yeah, so that's, the, that's the latest release in the U.S., La Loma. 
Yeah, so I was lucky to to source, you know, I was, uh, you know, going through the local uh, spot and uh, and I said, wait a second. And because they had, I, I think they had the 2018 as well. So I'm not sure, or it was a 2020. And then I was able to dig up the 2017 because it was on the shelf. I'm like, I'm taking this one. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man. And, and that's the fun thing is you find someone, someone sent me a message from the Bay Area. I think it was either San Francisco or, or somewhere nearby. And uh, they sent me a photo of the 2007 El Vergel uh, Añejo, which was the first ever batch of Añejo we produced that I, I haven't seen a bottle of that in, in, you know, almost a decade, probably. It's just cool, man, when people find those, those gems like that. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, kind of ask you like a forward looking question all of a sudden you know uh what i call overnight you know that's taken you know 30 years 40 years of of hard work by 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 tomas um where uh 100 agave uh tequila is all of a sudden in style you know, and, and people like looking for it, but it, you know, they, they say it's an overnight sensation, but it's really taken about like 40 years to get there um, for people to appreciate it, you know, and the same thing is going on with, with Mezcal as well. Um, where do you see the future? Oh man, great question. How, how long do we have Frankie? About three hours? As long, long as, as long as you need, as long as you need. Well, I think, you know, like you said, 30, 40 years, if, you know, if it's been around that, I think you're, you're probably spot on. Um, you know, there was a lot of education around what is, what is regular tequila or what some people call mixto tequila compared to 100% agave tequila. And I really feel like, especially in the U.S., a lot of people just get it. And I, and I think we're about 10 years behind the U.S. and the U.K. and maybe even a bit more behind, behind in mainland Europe, but we're getting there. We're getting there and we're moving that direction. The next thing I'm really looking at is 100% is not enough. And what I mean by that is great. This bottle of tequila is 100%. That is at least some kind of indicator of, of quality, let's say, but we want to look a step further. Are they using sustainable practices? Are they using very industrial and sometimes chemical processes um, or, or additive laden uh, tequilas, you know, that can still be hundred percent agave. So it's, we're kind of going that next step in terms of education, which is, I, I think, what's coming up next. And really a big focus on family-owned brands. You know, you have brands like Ocho and our sister brands, Tapatio and El Tesoro, um, Siete Leguas, uh, Fortaleza, G4, all of these um, family-owned brands. And there's not many of them left. Cascawin is another one to include in that, but probably not that many besides that. Um, and really a bigger emphasis on people learning the difference between that and, and the big guys, you know? Listen, uh, you know, there's always going to be the big guys, right? There's always going to be the big guys. And I think there's room enough, I think, in this world, if, if everyone's doing the right thing, you know, big or small. And, it, and what it does is it gives uh, everybody out there uh, an opportunity to try something really amazing. And, uh, you know, I'm going to ask Jack to throw up the slide of tequila, uh, Ocho. So you guys uh, can see, um, you know, that the beautiful, this is the, the Plata that we're featuring tonight. Um, but you know, that label is unmistakable. So much information on it. Uh, love it. Congratulations. Uh, cause you know, you, you couldn't have fed consumers more information on your bottles and, and I love the stories on the back in regards to um, the estate where, where all the tequila is grown. Um, but now for the most important question of the evening. So everybody out there, remember, ask, ask Frankie Dranks or ask Jesse Dranks, you know. Um, use your Spanish, brother. <laughs> Say something to our, uh, you know, our Nicaraguan and Hispanic brethren that are tuning in. Uh, cause we all like really think about, man, this guy's Spanish might be spot on. <laughs> well, you're really putting me on the spot now. Um, I'll just say, you know, tequila ocho is el primer tequila que es rancho único, que todas las, los agaves que utilicemos vienen de un, una huerta o un rancho único. Y eso es uh, importante para nosotros. 
How did I do, Gracias, friend? amigo. <laughs> eh, eso fue fenómeno, porque siempre viendo tu padre hablar de la tequila, lo mejor. Y cuando suelta el español, <laughs> todo el mundo se queda azorado. <laughs> so the, I the, said, uh, you know, uh, I loved it. Thank you so much, Jesse, uh, for sharing that because it, it felt authentic. It felt real. And to hear Tomas uh, talk about tequila, and then when he goes into Spanish, it's kind of like, wow, you know, and everybody gets, uh, you know, everybody gets surprised. I'm like, yo, this dude, this dude lives, lives tequila, man. Of course he, you know, he's going to do it, and he's going to sound like it. He's going to feel like it. And, and Jesse, you, you've you got that, man. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Frankie. You did catch me at a disadvantage. I'm only on my second tequila. Or third, so. oh, it gets it gets better as we go oh, it gets on. Way better, it gets way way more fluent as, uh, as tequila flows. All right, so listen, listen. Um, you know, at some point, you know, Joey's been planning this big trip, you know, to to Oaxaca. You know, now there's about like four thousand people that are gonna go on this trip, and I'm thinking, That'd we can awesome. we can make money on this, dude. You know, we can like sell tickets, and you know, we're gonna go visit. You know, he wants to go visit Oaxaca. You know, we got our friends over at uh, at another brand uh, that starts with a P that's quite large and they have a really nice hacienda. You know, <laughs> they want us to go over there too. I'm like, yeah, we'll visit you guys. And so, you know, we want to visit you as well. Oh man, you got to, you got to. Um, just let us know, man. Like we, we're, we're a little bit hard to find. We're kind of, uh, we're not, we're off the beaten track. We're kind of just in the middle of, huge beautiful agave fields so we're we're near arandas which is not far from el alto near uh near patron and, and don julio and siete leguas but um man yeah just you just need to make an appointment instead of just showing up but yeah man we can't wait to have you guys well, That's well listen and we, we you know listen in exchange joey uh I'm, I'm, i think i'm authorized to offer a visit to Absolutely. la gran fabrica drew estate when uh, things get better and yeah, we, uh, when you're traveling, we need to educate Jesse on cigars so he can he can talk to talk with the rest of the clan out there. You know, I will definitely take you guys up on that. It's rec I think Jack is recording it, so there's I've got I've got proof here that you've extended the invitation. <laughs> yes, I will definitely take you up on that. Thanks, and we accept your invitation as well, which is great. Thank you for having us. I'm I'm so ready for this, guys. Uh, yeah. Our trip starts at four thousand nine ninety five per person, <laughs> double occupancy. <laughs> Uh, it's 37 days, 47 nights of the most amazing experience you will ever have. Just sign up, uh, on, uh, Facebook live there. Uh, Jack Hare is taking reservations. Phones are, phone lines are open. You know, operators are standing by. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, Jesse, uh, thank you, my man. Thank you. Don't go anywhere, man. Cause we, yeah, we are. Anywhere. I have a question. The party's just getting started. Oh, Joey's got a question, so no, let's do this. Because I'm the I'm huge in tequila fan, as everybody knows, a mezcal fan. And you talk to you know terroir, and of late, I'd say like the last year, maybe two, that word has definitely popped up more in regards to tequila, and especially now I've been seeing brands, uh, you know, saying, "Oh, ours is a highland tequila versus a lowland tequila." and how you can actually taste where these tequilas are from based on that. So uh, I would ask, you know, what different farms are you sourcing from? Uh, are they a mix of all regions of where tequila is grown high to low? And how do you see that? Great question, Joey. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's really become kind of a buzzword and you see a lot of quote unquote single estates, uh, single estate tequilas, most of which are not actually single estate, but there's no, you know, there's no legal uh, restrictions on the use of that term or that word. Um, so what we, um, all of our fields are owned by the Camarena family, which is really unique. I mean, again, I can probably count the, we call those grower producers. So they, they grow and own their own plants and fields and, and uh, produce their own tequila. There's really probably, a, you know, a handful left of those in Mexico. So that's, that's very unique. And most of these fields have been like Las Aguilas has been in the, in the family for 60 or 70 years. So we know for all those years, for, you know, a few generations that no chemical pesticides, herbicides, you know, chemical fertilizers have been used on the soil 
or on the plants during that time. That's very important to us. Um, all of our fields are in Los Altos, in the highlands of Jalisco. So it's it's 100% highland tequila. Uh, most of our fields fall within what's known as the Golden Triangle. So an independent census was carried out probably 15 or 20 years ago. And um, these scientists and academics found that this one specific region within the highlands was the best for growing blue agave for use in, in tequila production. So most of the Camarena family fields by chance happened to fall within that triangle. So we're, we're very lucky. Um, and yeah, again, it's, it's quite rare to find, uh, like you said, you used to be able to actually have these grower producers who, and, and, and you would find a tequila that was, all of the agave sourced were from uh, the Tequila Valley or what, what some people refer to as the lowlands and other producers, and there still are some, like you said, that only use highland agaves. And, and that's kind of what got this terroir conversation started. One of the things that got that started with Carlos and my dad is that they were noticing these, you know, general similarities between the two different styles. And they wondered how much uh, terroir played a part in that. So they kind of took that a step further and said, well, what if we did single field? And again, you know, Oh, we, we've got between us three or four different tequila ocho blancos, Las Presas, Las Aguilas, La Loma. And we could recognize those side by side as all being tequila ocho plata. Um, but, you know, doing comparative tasting, you'll pick up these little nuances. One may be a bit fruitier, one may be a bit more vegetal or herbaceous or mineral. And to us, that's the beauty of, of creating, for lack of a better word, an artisanal product is that it will express itself slightly differently every time we produce it. And that to us is, is great fun. Right. That's cool. Yeah. I love the Highland stuff. I just, I've just noticed over time, once you uh, kind of have that identifier of where certain agaves are from, you can pick up the different nuances from the region. So it's quite interesting once, once you get to that spot where you can pick it out. And that's the fun part from, from farm to farm as you guys have different ones. It, it makes it that that's the fun part of the journey of sampling the different bottles that you offer. So it's cool stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Joey. Thanks for that question. And that, I'll be here. Hanging the main uh, jo Joey does not qualify for the <laughs> sticks and sips kit though. I'm just letting everyone know. Uh, so if you've got another good question, uh, please feel free to, to go ahead and, and get in the chat and, uh, and Jesse, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, don't go anywhere. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, above all, but I've got to go to my next guest, you know, who's been patiently waiting and, uh, you know, it's such a pleasure to have Carabella back on Sticks and Sips. And I'm going to say, Cara, how are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Thank you, Frankie. Uh, it's been, I think, my third time here. So it's an honor, obviously, to be here with you, gents. Um, and especially with Tequila Ocho, as you know, I'm a huge tequila fan. So learning all of this about their family, their their company, everything, I am enjoying this. And I'll probably learn way more than I ever thought I was going to learn tonight. So, and that's the thing. I mean, with, with cigars and, you know, wine and spirits, there's always something to learn. And even though you think you know a lot about something, you, there's always more to learn. So I'm very excited. I'm actually going to be on the lookout for different uh, years and whatnot of your tequilas. I have to go look inside to see what the other one is that I have. So, right. But yeah. don't leave now because you're, you're, I won't. Don't worry. No. I'm here. And, and, I'm and here. they have some great uh, other expressions as well. So, you know, that's, that's a cool part of tequila ocho. Uh, but listen, I picked uh, North, the Norteño um, Lonsdale, and uh, you know I'm going to ask Jack if he could throw that uh, Norteño slide up there. I know we've got a lot of Norteño fans out there. They say you don't give Norteño enough enough love, so I'm like, yo, here it is. You know, our Mexican San Andres wrapper, our Honduran binder, and Nicaraguan filler. This beautiful cigar, and that a lot of people. Um, still haven't had the opportunity to experience. So uh, I'm going to ask you, you know, Kara, um, tell me about Norteño. So, yeah, it's funny. When you asked me to be a guest tonight and you told me Norteño was the cigar, I was thinking, God damn it, you know, it's a little bit early here in uh, Southern California. So I usually <laughs> save my heavier cigars for later in the day. 
Um, and in all honesty, as many of you know, when we initially launched um, the Norteño, there was different sizes. There was a Coronita, whatnot, really small, soft box press. They were powerhouses. And I used to always smoke those cigars when I was visiting shops, accounts or whatnot um, in my territory. And then it got to the point where they were so strong, um, I kind of just had to veer away from them, at least the smaller sizes, I will say. And then a couple of years ago, we actually reconfigured all of the Herrera, Herrera brands. Um, so there's different sizes. So with that, I'm currently smoking the short Corona Gorda. And this is my very first time smoking the short Corona Gorda. And I am thoroughly amazed. It's so smooth, so rich. It's not, um, it's definitely got that strength to it, but it's really rich and it's got that spice to it, but it's not so in your face. So I am actually glad you asked me to be a guest tonight. Um, I have the box in one of my humidors. My husband smokes it all the time, um, but I usually defer to my Herrera Habanos when I'm smoking my Herrera cigars or whatnot, or the Brazilian Maduros, because I know they're more of the medium. So, um, but this guy here, the short Corona Gorda, epic smoke, soft box press. Um, it is your medium plus cigar. And just depending on the sizes that you will do, um, you'll get a little bit more strength, a little bit more spice. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Robusto Grande was rated number six a couple years ago. And across the board, all the sizes have been highly rated and um, sought out. I've never had the, the you said the Lonsdale? Is that what you're smoking? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, I've never even had the Lonsdale. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm missing here. There's so many cigars, <laughs> that's the thing, you know? So, um, but yeah, so the short Corona Gorda is what I'm smoking tonight. So can't go wrong with this. And it's going great with my tequila drink. So nice. Right. Well, I, I'm going to say this for everybody tuning in. It's like, well, you know, how, how does Karen not try every single stick we have? Guys, we have a lot of brands that make up Drew Estate. And uh, we're incredibly fortunate, um, you know, four expressions of Herrera Esteli. And then there's all the individual Vitolas. So these are the sizes of, of those cigars under each and every brand. And on top of our Liga, on top of our Undercrown, um, you add the tabacs, you add the acids, you add our, our leather, uh, I'm sorry, our, our Deadwoods. And, you know, you, you kind of build all these amazing sizes and um the blend affects the experience and this and the vitola you know affects the experience as well um so uh guys it's 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 a long journey you know it's a long I journey mean, yeah for sure i've definitely smoked all of our different blends but just all of the different sizes i certainly have not experienced all of them and especially since uh, just a couple of years ago we launched all the a couple new configurations in the norteño um I guess I just didn't even really realize what was going on here. So, but yeah, my, like I said, my always smokes this one and I pulled it out of the humidor just now. And I thought I was actually pulling out a Bellicoso. Um, lo and behold, here I am. So it's a beauty. So it's a soft box press, as you can see. I love, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a real cigar lover's cigar. It really is. That's I'm glad I, yeah. That's what it hits. It hits that that sweet spot for people that are like real seasoned guys. It's it hits on all cylinders. You know, it, it, it does everything you want it to do when you're trying to enjoy a really good, you know, premium ultra premium cigar. Uh, full flavored, full bodied, just a great experience. And that soft box press just makes it so perfect. Yeah, I, I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing. So I'll definitely be a house yeah, and more yeah. of these in the humidor. And that little bit of spice, that earthy spice. From the Norteño is great with the tequila. You know, just it just complements it so well. Joey, I'm I'm gonna ask you a question, and I think uh, you know, I hope it's not a question that everybody's out on the on the chat. Um, but talk about the Mexican San Andres wrapper, because I think that's something that's so cool. Yeah, I mean it's that, uh, that... it's 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 a wrapper that a lot of a lot of people use. It's a it's a very popular wrapper. But it's amazing how different from producer to producer it can taste and, and perform. And, and, and we use Mexican San Andreas on, on quite a few brands. And, and you can see just from Drew Estate how different the expression can taste, you know, from an Undercrown Maduro, which uses a, a Mexican San Andreas, to the Norteño. They're completely different. Uh, and that's the, that's the beauty of the product itself. 
is, is you could do so many different things with the leaf in, in pre-production, you know, when you're curing it, when you're fermenting it to achieve different results on the end. Uh, but, at, but at its core, Mexican San Andreas is this earthy, naturally sweet tobacco with a, just a, a kind of, a, I'd say cloying, I hate the word cloying, but that's the word that comes to mind. There's this cloying spiciness that rings through it. Uh, and especially with the Nicaraguan fillers, just banging. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's definitely not that heavy peppery, you know, spice that you get from some cigars that kind of just kick you in the face when you're smoking them. It's definitely, I mean, at least for me, everybody's palate is different, but it's super mellow. It's there. It's consistent. It's rich. It's got a lot of flavor, but uh, yeah, it's a beauty for sure. Yeah, the cigar smoker cigar. That's what it is. So if you know your shit, Nortenia is going to be in your rotation. Uh, if you're, you know, you're kind of new to the game, well, give it a shot. Try one of the Vitolas and see if it's for you. Uh, then that's the beauty. There's so many expressions within the line to experiment with and, and figure out which one works for you. Yep. Well, uh, Joey, you know, I, I went with the Lonsdale um, just because you get, you know, um, I guess in the blend, and we've talked about this, you know, you, we're getting a little more wrapper in, in this uh, versus, you know, uh, in the experience, you know, the, the thinner the ring gauge and you're getting a little more of that wrapper experience. And, and I think that's part of a really experiencing a, a Mexican San Andres wrapper. And, uh, in, you know, and we also included in our Pappy Van Winkle, you know, as, as that, that base wrapper that we, and then we, we took that fire cured leaf over that last, uh, last bit. But, you know, again, it makes an appearance and that's a very different iteration of it. And those are the things that like, I, I think when, when Jesse talked about terroir for us, you know, you talk about the terroir of a leaf and we're talking about this one expression and how we, you know, how we process it changes a whole lot of different things or how it's processed changes a whole lot with that leaf itself. And it goes great with some, uh, <laughs> some prosciutto de Parma. So prosciutto de Parma, Norteño, some tequila ocho. What, I mean, who's living better than me? A quarter survivor, dream. Dream. some rice I on the side. I mean, he's he's living the life, man. He's, you know, he's, he's Joey Drew. He's living the life. I just got to get my shot so I can get to Oaxaca. That's it. That's it. So... What, what was the price? What did I say? Forty nine ninety five double occupancy. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad for thirty seven days and forty seven nights. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> I just want to say that I love that when Jesse was talking about that, he goes, "But call us an appointment, just don't show up." He must have a little inkling of like how Drew Estate might operate. The fact that he said, "Don't <laughs> just show up." <laughs> it it has they happened. Will. It has they happened. Will. <laughs> We just had people show up at our factory in Nicaragua about a month ago, totally just, just random showing up at the factory right in the middle of the whole, this whole craziness of COVID and shit. They just show up like ready for a tour that's, you know, not happening. You know, it's like, holy, you know, and, and Esteli in Nicaragua is not somewhere that you just go to. I mean, you have, oh, to, you know got, where, you have to know where you're going to get there. Uh, yeah, you yep. got to travel to get to Esteli. You're <laughs> talking about off the beaten path. It's 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 definitely a, a trip and a half. Yeah. Oh, and that's one thing. Just to to go back to the the name Norteño. You know, it means northerner. Um, you know, obviously Esteli is in the northerner northern regions of Nicaragua. So that was one of the, one of the reasons why uh, Willie decided to name it Norteño with the bird. Yeah. And and then to a to a to an Esteliano, Willie's a northerner because he comes from Miami. So that's even further north. So exactly, yeah. <laughs> works two ways. So, so uh, yes, Kara, we, we will not show up at, uh, you know, at Tequila Ocho unannounced, you know. I mean, we might. It's, it's possible. <laughs> no, we're going to announce it and they're going to say, well, uh, I don't think it's a good date. No, we're showing up anyway. So here's the thing. We're going to, we're going to drop Jesse's name and be like, we did this event one time with Jesse on sticks and sips. He said, come on down and we're here. <laughs> here we are. And then we're going to put it on Joey. <laughs> That's fine. I'll take it. We'll, we'll make it work. And depending when you guys get there, we're, we're actually building a new distillery 
um, which is easier to get to, which is closer to town. So who knows? Hopefully you guys can see the new distillery. That'd be good fun. That's cool. I want to camp out in the fields. That's my dream. I want to put my tent in the field of agave. That's where I want to stay for like at least two or three nights. I'm ready to go. He's ready to get bitten by a snake and attacked by bats. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> I have been bitten dream, by dream, Joey. The dream. I've, 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 I've the been dream. bitten by a snake before, so that, I have that checked off the bucket list. So, bats. Yeah, I'm up for bats. Why not? You got the. I think. I think one of the worst is those those agave spikes, the leaves, the spiky leaves on there. Brutal, man. So you stumble out of that tent drunk. <laughs> And uh, it's going to be unpleasant. Watch, watch where you pee, guys. Watch <laughs> where you pee. <laughs> but, uh, listen, you know, listen, I don't know if it's time yet or not, because this was such a such an amazing show here. Uh, but um, it's that time of night where, you know, we we start to pivot and we move into the Ask Frankie drinks uh, mm -hmm. portion. But before that, before that, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to miss this dude. I'm a year in bro. I'm, I, Seriously. No, I, I, I'm a I'm year in. Um, oh, oh, oh. By the way, no one has said like a curse word and Jesse, I'm going to blame you. Um, <laughs> no, I cursed. What'd you say? I said shit or something. <laughs> I don't know. I think wow. on the last Poop. six sips that I was on, I cursed way too much. So <laughs> <laughs> That's why there was a break with having you back. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> but anyway, listen, um, we got Mescal Minute, man. This is the moment people like the, you know, my, as like my man, you know, Ryan Rayford, who may or may not be tuning in, says oh, the yeah. streets have been demanding this. So, uh, so here we go, Mescal Minute. Uh, you need to you, first swallow the prosciutto. Sorry, you know. <laughs> you know, get let, let's get past that as I give you your glorious introduction. So, without further ado, uh, the the master of agave, uh, the master of mezcal. You know, he's uh, he's the man that's behind every brand you've ever seen for Drew Estate, and uh, this is his shining moment, mezcal minute. Welcome back, Joey. Oh man, it's great to be here, and I just love watching everybody chiming in on the uh, in the chat, mezcal minute baby, and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Jason Ojeda, thank you. Uh, but you know what? I'm not doing mezcal tonight. Oh my God, what happened? But because it was tequila ocho, uh, I wanted to go with something from the area, from the neighborhood, let's so to speak. So in and around uh, Jalisco and in the region where they make uh, tequila, they make another spirit called ricea. And ricea is made from a, a slew of other agave varietals grown in the same area as the Blue Weber. Uh, artisanal product, very kind of rustic. Uh, and so I'm drinking uh, La Venenosa, which is the venom, if you translate it. So it, it plays to that being uh, bitten by snakes uh, sort of stuff. Right, there you go. It, it means the venomous one. Yeah. So uh, and I've been bitten by a snake before. So uh, I continue to enjoy being snake bitten by drinking Ricea. It's a super amazing agave product. Uh, it really sits in a weird spot outside of tequila and mezcal. It's it's. I'm going to use unctuous. It's funky. There's a kind of blue cheese kind of note that, that comes through there. There's a, a stony kind of earthen quality to it. Just a magical, magical spirit. So if you see it on a shelf somewhere, don't be intimidated. Uh, just because it says Ricea and you don't know what it means. What it means is it's going to be delicious and neat. It's just amazing. Neat. Love, love it pairing with cigars. Uh, so take a step out of the... Uh, out of the woods and get some Ricea, delicious stuff. <laughs> and, and I made a Ricea Corpse Reviver the other night and that was delicious too. So you, you can swap out tequila for Ricea and a lot of different drinks. Enjoy, we're salute not, everybody. We're, we're not doing that shit. Uh, we're drinking tequila ocho till the bottle runs dry. Uh, but anyway, salute Joey. Oh, yeah, that uh, bottle's that, low, bro. That, that, was, that was way more than a minute. Did, do, you, do you see how these guys, this was full and these guys kept on like, can you make another Corpse Reviver? I'm yeah. like, you know, Jesse, you know this, right? Whatever effort it takes to make one cocktail for the cocktail video, you you might as well just make the entire bottle. Right? Yeah, because exactly, whether man. these one bottles have holes in them, they just evaporate. It's like, you know, yeah. 
That's yeah, what I, I feel about all of my AC. tequilas. They just evaporate, I swear. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, look, tequila's become like what one of the number one, number two selling spirits in the US. I mean, it just keeps growing and growing. That means people are drinking this stuff. You know, people are making cool, interesting cocktails. They're experiencing unique, you know, single varietals. They're, you know, at an amazing estate, you know, reserve stuff. You know, so that's that's really, really cool. And it's uh to have another cocktail that's not a margarita. How many margaritas can you make? So a corpse survivor, it, it plays off similar ingredients, but yet it translates so differently. And so uh, as, as my good friend Jesse uh, put here, resucitador de cuerpos, uh, that's his version of a corpse survivor here. Um, and so, if, you know, if you really want to get tongue-tied in Spanish, Jesse, congratulations, man. You, you got it done. Because uh, uh, I speak Spanish it. and saying resucitador de, de cuerpos, uh, you know, depending on how many tequilas in, it's a little difficult. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. Uh, Joey, you took way more than a minute. Uh, right. so, he, so here are the questions, right? But before we get to the questions, I'm going to say cheers to everybody, man, because, uh, you know, uh, this is well deserving of this minute. Uh, you know, we had Kara on, we had Jesse on, we had Joey on. Jack's got a camera. I mean, you know, we've got the sexy uh, product cam. Could you throw that one up one more time? One They're more calling time. for it. Wow, look, the streets are calling for this, and look at how beautiful that looks, man. This is I like this is a sexy that. moment. Beautiful. <laughs> this is a sexy moment. Yes, the bottle's a little low. That's okay. You know, yeah. this is you know. This isn't sticks and stare, it's sticks <laughs> and sips. Uh, so, uh, or sips and steaks or whatever the show is called. Uh, I, for, I forgot. Anyway, uh, but our questions, that moment you've all been waiting for, for you guys that are gonna get your beautiful like hat, um, this beautiful sticks and sips cutter, uh, Zycar cutter. Um, Jack may even throw in a sticker or two. And this beautiful cocktail kit, guys, this little cocktail kit there. <laughs> There you go, uh, that you guys can enjoy. Uh, so first question, Andy St. Grim. Um, Jack, roll the questions a little higher. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Sorry about that. It's a technical thing. We're working some things out here. Uh, Andy St. Grim, congratulations. In tonight's featured cocktail, what does Koki taste like and what is it? Um, you know what? I'm going to feature, I'm going to throw that over to uh, our mixologist friend our bartender extraordinaire, uh, Mr. Jesse Estes as well. Uh, what is Koki Americano for everybody out there? Excellent question. Uh, thanks for that. And uh, Koki is, is a replacement for a kind of uh, defunct product, if we can call it that, called Kina Relay, which was, would have been the original or, or very close to the original used in the, in the Corpse Survivor number two. Um, so Koki Americano is, is, I think it's technically a Bianco vermouth. Um, and it, it kind of has the closest profile we think to the old Kino Lale. So, um, it's really how to describe it. It's kind of like, it's a, it's a wine base. Um, so it's kind of a wine an aromatized wine that's slightly higher alcohol proof. Um, I think it's delicious, man. I drink that stuff. Uh, you can drink it on the rocks. It's not, it's not that sweet. It's not kind of uh, cloyingly sweet to use uh, yeah. Joey's, uh, Joey's favorite word. Um, but it's, it's tasty, man. I drink it on the rocks. I drink it with soda water. Yeah, uh, we were just talking alcohol. about that last week. We were like, wow, this is such a refreshing, flavorful spirit on its own. It's low ABV, lower ABV than most stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, with some club soda, man, it's, it's, very refreshing and delicious stuff. And and I think uh, in the Koki, it is a chinchona that's that's actually in there, right? That's giving it that little je ne sais quoi, right? Moment. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's like, this, this isn't bitter, but it's not, you know, fully in that, right? Yeah, it adds an extra dimension. So if you look at like Lele now, current Lele, it's not a vermouth. If you look at the bottle, it, it should just say aperitif, wine or something, something like that, mm -hmm. but it won't say vermouth because it doesn't have the right wormwood content and, and things like that. So that, that add those bitter elements to vermouth. I, I love it. So, uh, so that was a great question on Koki Americano. 
And there's actually, if you guys want, are going around, there's a Koki Rosso. Uh, so you guys can explore, explore that one. Um, but beautiful, beautiful yeah, expressions. You have the bottle behind you, right? Or is it in the kitchen? No, they, come on, man. The animals took it to freaking try yeah. to make their own. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, sorry about that. Yeah, I would have shown it, you know. If somebody will, you know, I, I think Jack's actually running out. Get the Pierre Ferrand while you're at it. <laughs> I love being in the studio, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, so, and then actually, um, let's see, Chad, Chad Manson, uh, and he's, and this is actually at Jesse Drinks. If this wasn't your career, what would you be doing? Jesse, that's a great question for you, not for me, oh, for you. <laughs> That's a great question. I got to ponder that one for a while, man. Um, I'm a, I, I speak a number of languages, so I did think about going into translation or something like that. Um, I thought about going into etymology, which thank God I didn't. I don't know what the hell I'd do with that. Um, but <laughs> Who uh, made you for that? <laughs> I don't know. How uh, much could you drink doing etymology? <laughs> not a lot. Exactly. Terrible. <laughs> Um, but no, I, you know, some kind of, some kind of translator or something. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy languages, but, uh, that's a great question, man. I'm going to have to ponder that one as I finish the, the second mm -hmm. half of this Añejo. So listen, uh, we're going to go back to the sexy cam for the earlier question. So this is the, uh, the Coqui Americano. Um, it's really pale, um, yellow in, in its appearance. Uh, the aroma is beautiful. Um, Pierre Ferrand, dry curacao. Um, so one of the tweaks, Jesse, when we were making it was you probably like dialed down instead of one ounce, we probably put uh, three quarter, um, just cause that, that fucker is like dry, you know, flavorful, but really dry. So, you know, we're going to complain to Gabriel, uh, Alexander <laughs> about that, you know, <laughs> uh, no, we won't, no, we won't. Cause uh, I love that product. <laughs> You know, if you, if you drop the curacao down a, a little bit, well, you add a little bit more tequila to taste. You know? Man, you can never you can never go wrong with more tequila. So that's yeah. always going to work. And, and actually, so so you guys know the, the everybody watching uh, the recipe we use in house is actually two ounces. Um, but remember that. Uh, so two ounces, one ounce of Coke Americana, one ounce uh, lemon juice, fresh press and three quarters. Uh, but you got to make sure that your coupe glass um, is at least five and a half um, if you're going to make that single pour. But no one ever makes this freaking cocktail one at a time. So, uh, you know, all bets are off. So uh, just, you know, serve it in whatever you got, you know, a coupe glass, rocks glass, jug, whatever. You'll enjoy it nonetheless. Uh, and don't forget the absinthe. And I've got like my good friends. I, I use St. George oh, uh, beautiful. for my good friends. Yeah. Um, and it's nice. It's not overwhelming. So just a little bit for the rinse. And I use a little aromatizer just on the top just to add a little bit to it. And, uh, and Joey's just having a coupe glass filled with uh, prosciutto. Uh, Joey, you, if people you want to see, you got to say something. I mean, if that's what you're going to do, this is what you got to do. You drank the corpse reviver. So what are you going to do with that empty coupe glass? It's beautiful. Well, stick prosciutto in it, of course. So you're of dipping course. your meat in the empty glass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> e easy. Easy there, big dog. Easy. Hey, hey. See, this is, Frankie, you said there wasn't enough swearing. This is tequila, on tequila number five is when the, when the real you know, euphemisms and things are here, coming. Here we go. Here we go. All right, we're getting there. Uh, Bear Wasco, congratulations. Uh, ask Frankie Dranks, will there ever be a DE Frankie Dranks mixed recipe book put out? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Will there? Somebody knows something. Shush. <laughs> it won't be as good as this. Or maybe I was going to say, don't sell yourself short, man. I'm, 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 I'm all be on the pre-sale on that one. Listen, man, uh, you know, uh, bear, uh, I'm, I'm allowed to say this. I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. We we've had a beautiful year of six and sips, uh, of great guests of uh, their beautiful cocktails and, and, uh, and we're definitely working on it. Cause, uh, cause I want to share, 
you know, all those, unless you've got, you know, 52 hours to spend with us on these old episodes and kind of rewatch and see the recipe. So I'm going to, we're going to try to make it easier for you guys out there uh, to get a beautiful book, just like Jesse's. Cause that's uh, you know, man, that's a beautiful book. And uh, I need a copy of that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, great, great I'll, photography I'll on there. To address, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll hook oh, one yes, up. Yeah, definitely. I'd appreciate that. And uh, listen, and with and, that, Frankie, and, and with, with that, that we'll steal your phrase as I chew on my mm, meat. It's so salty. <laughs> You're eating, bro. I'm like, I'm here. I'm hosting a show. I'm, I know. I'm, I'm kind of hungry too. Done. Everybody out there, look, you miss an episode because you were busy during the week or something. Man, our YouTube channel has mm. got every episode. You can go back and rewatch these suckers and, and get to, oh, I missed this one. I want to know about this cocktail. I want to know about this pairing. You know, so you can always go back and watch every episode that we produce. So go do it. YouTube, man. Everything's on YouTube, man. Go there. What are you waiting yeah, for? Yeah, go there. I think, man, if you've, if you've got a Roku or anything, you can watch it on your TV, man. What would be better watching me and Joey and our beautiful guests on a big screen TV and a big old cup of freaking prosciutto? Don't eat all that shit, dude. Just hang on. I'm trying to cut, cut off the show. <laughs> Susan Lance, uh, congratulations. You are a winner. Uh, Ask Frankie Drinks, where can we get the tequila book? And uh, Jesse, I'll, I'll, I'll leave this to you. Um, where can we get tequila beyond sunrise? Great question. Thanks for that. And thanks for, uh, for supporting the book. Um, it's available on Amazon. It's available um, at kind of, I think, larger bookstores. And, and actually, I found it in some random independents. I don't have a list of, of all the independents, though. Um, but Amazon, you know, is, is an easy one. That's it. Get it on Amazon. Watch it on YouTube. I mean, that's the world we live in. All right. So, so uh, is this? Um, that's how. That's how I got it. I got no special connections. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, is this the last question of the evening? All right, Jason Ojeda, congratulations! You are the winner, uh, man. You're gonna get your cutter, your your hat, your your little cocktail kit, man. You know, when people start flying, these things are gonna be gold, man. You're gonna you're gonna be able to make your old fashioned in the plane. So you get all you need is your mini, and this, and you and well, you need four minis if you're gonna use the entire kit. You know, but that depends on the flight. So, Kara, if I come see you, I'm going to take one of these and uh, about four minis. How about that? Of course, definitely. I think those should be in my like everyday travel kit when I'm traveling. Hello. Like to the grocery Hello. store? Yes. Like, Hello. <laughs> just, just like to the grocery store, to Home Hello, Depot. Jack. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hello, Jack. All right. You, you got it. So, uh, Jason, uh, the, Jason's questions. I am always curious about how the names of drinks are chosen. How do you pick your drink names? Um, Jesse, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw this one to you, but I'm going to kickstart it. Right. Uh, a lot of these are, uh, you know, they're, they're classic cocktails. And, and so, you know, Corpse Survivor is a very old cocktail has been named uh, in a very old cocktail book. And we kind of follow those trends, but um, what inspires you to name certain cocktails certain ways? Thanks, Frankie. And thanks, Jason. Great question. And congrats, man, on winning that kit. I'm, I'm very envious. That's, that's, a, that's a super cool uh, prize to win. Um, like, like Frankie said, man, these old, these really old drinks that date back to the 1800s, it used to be that cocktail was actually its own category of mixed drink. And then you had fog cutters and, and corpse survivors and, and all these different classes, slings and things like that. And of course, the cocktail just morphed into becoming the catch-all term for, for any mixed drink, essentially, alcoholic mixed drink. Um, but yeah, honestly, I used to keep a list of cool sounding names. I used to keep it separate because if I was ever on the spot and created a drink and I had to come up with a name, I could never come up with a decent name. But I come up with these great names and then eventually pair them with the drink that I created. Uh, I'm not great at naming cocktails, I'm not going to lie. Um, but Frankie, I'm curious to hear about uh, yours and uh, and Joey. I know Joey. Will well, be more. So, so uh, yes, go ahead. Kara. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in real quick. I've never named a cocktail by any means, but I have some uh, 
some captured moments with Mr. Frankie Drinks. And I think it's the experience sometimes, you know? Um, we've been in a mezcal bars before and all of us came up with names of things. It just kind of happens that way, right? You know? But what do I know? Right. What do you know? But actually, Kara's got like one of the best cocktail names ever because uh, we were at a place called the Ghost Donkey. Oh, the ghost. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, you can't go wrong at Ghost Donkey. You know, you it's like so, yeah. you know, I said it in my best, you know, in my best Shrek impression that we should make a drink called Donkey. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the whole thing is you've got to say it in the Shrek voice. So um, I'm kind of going into next level. <laughs> Very simple drink name. It's called Donkey, but you cannot order the donkey unless you say Donkey. <laughs> and that's it, Carrot, right? And, uh, and my it man. It is 100%, but that's, I was thinking about the Donkey, but like you have to, like, how do you translate that tone to written word? You don't. It, it it really depends, you know. Like if if it's if it's a riff on something classic, you try to incorporate that classic uh, that classic piece into it. Um, I think you. Um, I, I, mean, I, think you Jesse, I think he's stumped. I think he's stumped right now. No, you you Everybody threw in like a red hook. Everybody knows him in Manhattan, but now right, I'm but, gonna make a black Manhattan. You know? Right, and and so uh, and that was um, and then uh, that was Phil Ruger. Ward who actually coined the phrase Black Manhattan um, at Death & Co. And you've actually got one of my really good friends in your book uh, who did The Naked and Famous, and that's Joaquin no. Simo, when he was at Death & Co. And so, oh, I'm sorry, Phil Ward did The Black Prince, so which was a rum riff on a Black Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> so, because uh, <laughs> these it's things appear everywhere, and it's kind of like hard to keep track, and, and, and these guys are so good at it. Joaquin says, listen, read the paper every day. If anything, read the racing form and see the, you know, he, he's like, read the racing form and see what horses' names are, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, that's, it was awesome. that's an awesome place to start, man. I'm going to start doing that for, for drinking. <laughs> that's a great you piece know, of advice. You know, and I was like, oh, my God, you know, like. You know, but then, you know, like, and then, but I, but I did that like one time and it was like a, a, a horse named smell a bush. And, and that was like, uh, this is not going to work, man. You know, Joaquin, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and go tried and true. And, uh, you know, cause could you imagine if that horse was like in the lead or anything, it would be like, this is horrible, you know? <laughs> Uh, so that was one of the greatest questions ever. Uh, inspiration for cocktail names comes from a lot of different things, Kara. It comes from the experience. It comes from uh, a little tie back to what that cocktail is at, at times. Yeah, or the and, brand. Uh, and what the brand is and what the brand inspires in you as well. Uh, so you know, if, you know, we, we will go back Corp Survivor number eight is, a, is a riff on Corp Survivor. And we did number eight because it's a riff on the two, but we're swapping tequila for gin and we're throwing in the eights, tequila ocho, simple, but then you get into more difficult things and, and you got to get a little more involved. And it's a lot of fun though. Yeah, it's no, a it lot is. of fun. Look, look, last, look, last night on my Instagram post, I swapped out the tequila ocho for the venenosa ricea and I made it, you know, death by snakes. Nice. Love it. You know, I love it. By snakes. Now, if you saw that on a menu, you want to order it because it says death <laughs> by snakes. And if you're a tough guy like me, tough, you know, tattooed up and crazy, you want to you want a death by snakes cocktail. So there you go. And next right. week, well, well, paper planes and, and use rice and have a snakes on a plane. Yeah. Ooh. Snakes on a plane. There you go, man. You there know, go. but but Joey, I wouldn't have got death by snakes, man, because this is a reviver, so it'd be like old snake revival. Or big tent you. revival. So we could have a lot of fun with these names and, and yeah. you know it's <laughs> what do what do you call those? Tent revivals? <laughs> with <Yeah>. snakes. <laughs> so uh oh, listen, oh. man, it, it listen, it, you know, uh guys, you know, I'm all out of corp survivor. I'm just about out of tequila ocho and any of the other ingredients because, uh, you know, the people here, but more importantly, to have you guys. Luckily, I'm fully loaded on. Yeah, you are. I was going to say, you're loaded on cigars. That's for Dude, sure. Uh, the, these are coming <laughs> home with me. Uh, I'll leave the, the Toro Especials. You know, uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get a box of Cara. Uh, Jack, 
production, make a note to uh, to our sales force. Kara needs a box of Lon- Lonsdale's. Uh, Kara, Jesse, Kara, Kara. you know, you, we've got some <laughs> th- some things coming out to you as well. Uh, amazing, brother. Thank you. And, uh, and that, so, uh, and that uh, old fashioned kid or the whatever, you know, hello. We'll send you a whole bunch. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll send you the whole thing, I'll, but you know, I'll, you can. I'll take a case. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew we should have I'll tell you more. what. My husband is very much a old fashioned drinker. And the first time he met uh, Frankie Dranks, um, he, he made my husband a drink. And my husband said, hands down, damn, this is literally probably the best one i've ever had so and that Thanks. says a lot because he's a picky mo so <laughs> who you? Who you? well uh thank you for that Kara. uh you know always you know it's guys like jesse that i've had the privilege to be around that have influenced me uh joaquin simo uh you know you know what can i say man best of the best um guys that that influence me and and uh and you know make me up the game and, and and a lot of it is it's real simple it's it's taking these recipes taking exact measurements um quality ingredients and proper technique and that goes down to uh even to the ice right my man joey ice ice nerd <laughs> you know and uh and i'll share this with you guys you know uh you know we get into conversations about clear ice when we first met and said you know that's the most important thing man it's like you know people overlook it it's such an integral part of a cocktail um the proper ice um and using proper technique and these things and then he shoots me a picture like a few months later he's at a local bar i won't say where and then he's shooting me a picture of some cloudy ice and like this is bullshit, man <laughs> and I'm like so dude, I've never you, you I've have, never you've gone to the dark side I've never heard clear ice that's because because we haven't had enough time together Kara this is yeah. a this is an ongoing journey I've but, sent uh, back but drinks if the ice is cloudy really it goes right back or or I've called Frankie from a restaurant <laughs> to complain about the ice he then called the bartender with it. <laughs> into my table and apologize to me for the poor quality of ice in my drink are you kidding me nope. that's, holy the, holy. that's that's the that's the height of douchiness jesse hey, you know it's not it's, not, it's not a proud <laughs> moment in our lives hey but. if you're paying 18 20 for a cocktail in a nice place it better be spot on i don't want no refrigerator frozen cloudy ice chips no uh, those those these days no. there's no no excuse no and that's why, you, why you're talking about the ingredients frankie we we, we did talk about the uh the felon dry curacao but man i'd really recommend you guys try a classic margarita i just do two parts tequila i use our plata one part freshly squeezed lime juice and one part of that dry mm-hmm. curacao wow talk about starting with the best quality ingredients i mean mm-hmm. that's that's it for me right there. That, and that Pierre Ferrand is exceptional. I know everybody right. uses all the other different orange liqueurs and stuff out there. Put that stuff aside. Look for that bottle. That stuff is life-changing, great stuff. What do you use for the Tommies, man? <laughs> Let, let's give a shout out to uh, to all the folks in San Fran. So what's, what's your Tommies mix? My Tommy's, my go-to is, uh, two, and it, you know, something people don't talk about a lot is the agave nectar being used, but you know, two parts tequila, one part fresh lime. And to my taste of sweetness is about half a part um, agave, but I find it really depends on the, on the brand I'm using. So I, I really uh, look out for that. I have a few brands that I favor in the UK and, and here I'm sure there's a whole different set of brands. But yeah, man, Julio Bermejo, creator of the Tommy's Margarita and my dad's counterpart. So he's the, the official tequila ambassador for North America. And uh, I would say, I don't know about you guys, but probably one of the most, uh, you know, around the world for me, I go anywhere in the round, around the world, I see Tommy's on the menu, you know, probably yep. the most popular contemporary classic alongside the Cosmo and the, and the Espresso Martini. And, and listen, and if, if uh, what, what's, uh, you know, uh, and Bade Balam, who's uh, behind the bar uh, over with, when Julio's not around, and, you know, their, their selection of tequila is amazing. And it was like that, that spot I happened to jump in, um, and he's like, you've got to try G4 if you haven't tried G4. And I'm like, that, 
that doesn't sound like a really appetizing name for a tequila, but he's like, he's, and he's rattling off the entire story as he's making a Tommy's for me. And it was like, man, you know, congratulations for, to, to Julio and his staff out there for, for tr training some of the best people, some of the best people that, that, that sell uh, tequila and, um, and to watch them make gigantic. Kara, when you're in San Fran, you got to hit, hit this spot. I will. Will she be able to find it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, oh my God. It's, uh, I'll send you, I'll send you. I mean, yeah, send, send me the link. Yeah, she has issues finding places that you send her to. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I love but... that Joey knows the whole story. The whole story. We hear it every time you're on Sticks and Skips. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a great story. It's a great story, man. Yeah. You couldn't find it. Look for the donkey in the door. You're like, what donkey in the door? You know. Even the people and, in the casino the way, sent Jesse, me on a freaking Jesse, excursion this, this to was, find the This place. was a ghost donkey in Las Vegas in the Cosmo. And, and guess who's and, never been there? Joey. Weird. Legend. I stay and away so, from So, yeah, it's not Ghost Donkey in New York, which is uh, easy to find. Wait, uh, so right, I want to ask a question. I want to ask yes. a question because we have a you, lot but, of. But you, um, can't, but you can't win a pack, though. Um, I think maybe <laughs> I. It's okay. But we'll send you one anyway. Yeah, send me two. <laughs> with the ice with the ice i've never heard of this before so i and there's a lot of people in the um in the chat saying holy moly okay. i never knew this about ice so when you're at home and you're making your own ice how do you get the most clear ice to be the most joey drew's not going to send my drink back to the bartender ice <laughs> is, right, it, so uh, is it filtered ice is it, or water what is it well uh how about this uh Jesse, if you don't mind talking uh, just like just briefly about the importance of ice, I'll go get like a sample of what uh, of what clear ice could be. Yeah, the official clear ice maker of Drew Estate. Right? All right. See, this th this is why we're here, folks. This is why we're here. All right, Jesse, tell us about clear ice and the importance thereof. Yeah, you know, I, I remember. So we think of like the margar the martini as a two ingredient cocktail, or the margarita as a three ingredient cocktail. Um, and I remember some years ago when especially bartenders or, or, you know, even home mixologists started really adding that extra ingredient saying, no, it's a four ingredient drink, the margarita, the martini is a three ingredient drink because you've got, you know, your, your gin, your vermouth, and you've got your ice. Like, they, like to bring that focus on this is, this is an ingredient that's going into the drink that, you know, up to kind of 20, 25% of what you're drinking in the cocktail is that diluted ice. Um, so if you're starting with water that has, you know, a taste, it tastes like chlorine, it tastes like whatever, that's going to influence the cocktail, it's going to taint the cocktail. And Frankie's got the professional setup there. That's uh, we, don't, we don't mess around here at the Fix and Sips. Yeah, so, um, so first, let me start with, um, with a sample. So, uh, Jack, can you put on, can I put on the sexy cam? Sexy. Oh, you you need to look into the sexy cam, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, that's a clear piece of ice um, that comes out of this uh, this ice maker, which I'll hold up for you guys. Okay. Um, I can see you through the ice. Whoa. And so uh, what this is is actually an insulated uh, tub, and it's got two layers of ice of, of water. It's a silicone uh, top and water goes into two layers and it makes uh, eight big blocks, but only the top four blocks actually come out clear um, because it freezes, it, it, it mitigates the cold reaching the ice so all the impurities can actually flow out and finally the, the, the top chunks come out like super, super clear. Oh. Um, and you guys can kind of like take a look and, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's such a, an important part of cocktail making um, for, for a couple of different reasons. And one of them is when you're trying to chill the temperature and you're trying not to over dilute so that the ice that, that you have at home is gonna dilute very quickly because it has a lot of surface area. And then as soon as alcohol touches it, um, it starts to lose this water bond. Right, so water starts to dilute into your cocktail, so you dilute really fast. So if you're using um, refrigerator ice from your home, 
just be prepared and know to do it very quickly in one move and not let it sit and, you know, and kind of separate these things. Um, but when you get like hard block ice, even if it's not super clear, even the cloudy ones that are at the bottom, they work really well uh, for what I call shake ice. And then you could use these to like pour your old fashioned over and they don't melt as fast as the home ice. So you're kind of wow. keeping that in integrity and strength of all those beautiful flavors that you've put into a great cocktail and you're keeping it from watering down. That's, that's the big part of it. And, and then, it um, what, I mean, it just, I mean, at the end of the day, when you make a nice cocktail and you're presenting it and you're behind the bar, you've made this whole cocktail and you put it up on the bar for some to serve somebody that clear ice just makes the whole thing magical. It's like having a diamond in there. The, the spirit and the combination of all the ingredients just just emerge from there. It's amazing. Yeah, Cloudy you, ice just ruins the whole thing. You drink with your eyes first, right? If you have, you know, floating ice that's, yeah, that's not clear and no, nah, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. But when it comes to a, a margarita or a corpse survivor, um, the better the ice that you figure, I'm just shaking it. It's not a big deal. It actually is a big deal. It's actually not over diluting the drink. So, so your measurements stay within. And it also, it, I mean, guys have chilled, right? You know, compared shake um, versus shake and, and cloudy ice does not get up to temp over the same amount of period of time. And that's kind of one of those cool things that you could hyper chill your drink and, and uh, also have it dilute at the right percentage. So now that we all got all geeky, Kara, did that I'm answer I'm just going to say that I, I wish I would have done that for my si sixth grade science project. You know, <laughs> Cocktail making. That would have that would have made sense. That would have been really <laughs> good. By the way, you can buy one of these on Amazon. Uh, just look up Clear Ice Maker. They, they're not really expensive. They, you know, we used to have to do, make these like homemade, you know, uh, get a really small cooler and then cut out the pieces of styrofoam and then put a thing. And then we pour the water inside of, of a keeper. And then we try to cover it and then just leave it uncovered. Then like halfway through cover it and then let, you know, so it doesn't freeze. Wow. Cause when it's in your freezer, just guys, you know, it's freezing from the outside and it's trapping all, all the air bubbles and all the impurities inside, you know, and as you slow chill it, um, you're actually raising everything to come out. So that's part of so it. But again, like, hey. Those yes. silicone, you know, you buy those, you go to the store, you buy a silicone uh, block ice tray. You know, those are trash basically because they're still. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But it'll be a better option than using your, your freezer ice. Okay, you know, so if you use those, because at least they're a bigger block and they will dilute at a slower percentage. So even if you, don't get something fancy like this. Um, that's still a better option for you. Well, Frank, I'm trying, to, questions, I'm trying Kara. to be fancy on your level. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna buy that right now. <laughs> it's worth it. Like worth it because it's, it's you know it's twenty dollar cocktails at home. You know it's it really if you get the yeah. great ingredients and you you just learn how to make a simple and nice garnish. That's it's you are making the same quality at home. I would say. And you need Honestly, some muscle, you need some muscles to break that ice out of that sucker because my God. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's some people in the, in this room that have some issues with this, you know. Particularly asking how how to make ice, you know, and um, and I thought that was pretty clear about it. So, <laughs> so uh, we'll, so at, we'll we'll get to that. So I buy this, and at home, that whole contraption has to go into my freezer, obviously. Yeah. So what 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 this so I need is not the freezer. So what this is, so you guys can see, um, <laughs> this is going to be a bitch on the air. I'll probably knock over the set, but there's there's uh, there's let two it, silicone let it out a little while squares, right? Before, before you know, there's two silicone it. squares, right, that go inside of this hard, uh, have, yeah, um, okay. this hard box which is insulated, <laughs> and then um, so you put uh, one silicone piece inside the other, and just fill it with water. And it, it will, it will f just leave it alone. 24 hours later, you're going to have like some really cool ice. All right. So, some of it will be here. cloudy. Some <laughs> of it will be cloudy. You can still use it, but that's what I usually break up and use it as shake ice. And then I use the top ones that are super clear for like a nice uh, old fashioned or anything else that uh, e even if it's a whiskey that somebody wants on a rock, that's a beautiful presentation. Well, for your Instagram for you. post, I mean, you got to have a, you know, your Instagram yeah. post, it's got to tell it, you know. 
you, you, you can't you can't use you can't use you know free you know fridge ice it's no nope. can't do it no bueno and with so that, for everybody tuning in, I mean, and with that, listen, the bar's closed, man. Make sure you uh, you tip well. Um, you know, I want to thank uh, my very special guests, uh, Joey Drew, as always, Miss um, Carabella. Thank, thank you so world. much for joining. You know, we're coming up on the one big year celebration. I can't wait. Uh, no one big year Joe. coming up. No, you know, no, and no thanks to Joe Grow, who's on some competing show uh, today at the same time. Executive, hey, fuck producer. that guy. Right. Hey, fuck that guy. And I'll say I'll say the third time if you didn't hear me. Uh, fuck that guy. You know, he, he's only he's only the executive producer of the show. Uh, anyway, you know but, uh, I want to thank my man, Jesse Estes, man. You have been a, a plethora of knowledge for us. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much for sharing your story, sharing the, the story of Tequila Ocho. And uh, man, you know, we, we want to go hang with you. Thanks for having me, Frankie, and and thanks to everyone for tuning in. I hope this was interesting, and uh, you know, any questions you can you can shoot me a line uh, on Instagram is probably easiest at Jesse Ocho. Um, and guys, it was great hanging out, and looking forward to seeing you all in Mexico. Yeah, my man, that's what I'm talking. We're about. We're on our way. We're on our way. <laughs> What's this wee business? Hey, I told you I'm a part of this. I'm a part of this. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. So, uh, listen, thank you for everybody for tuning in. Uh, next week, our big anniversary episode. Don't miss out, you know. Uh, big giveaway. And uh, we're, we're going to celebrate being on the air for a year. Uh, I've only taken four weeks off. You know, what can I say? You know, uh, 52. I will say, wait, I will say something. I give it up to you, Frankie Drinks, because every year, many people know, uh, consumer-wise, we shut down. For, for the holiday, for Christmas. There's no events. Well, there might be some events, but we shut down, the warehouse closes. Mr. Frankie Dranks, he was still out here in these dirty streets doing his sticks and sip through the holidays. So there you go. I and saw it, that and I was like, this motherfucker doesn't stop. So yes, I love it. Stop, won't stop. Well, I raise a glass to you. Thank <laughs> That's you. my saying. That's my you know, <laughs> and, th and thanks to uh, my man, uh, Jack Hare out there. Uh, make making it real. He, he he makes it rain. He makes it rain for sticks and sips. You know, so uh, so Those so stickers. thank you guys. <laughs> Listen, uh, you know, thanks to the D family, everybody out there. Thank you, uh, sticks and sippers, for tuning in. And uh, with, yeah, and people, with that, go. And with that, I'm out. See you next week. Big anniversary. We'll, we'll see you, Salute. Jesse. Thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs>